Global Scale Up members, thank you for joining us now. I'm with Kei Shibata. Kei, as you may know, is actually someone very, very connected in the travel industry all over the world, of course, specifically in Asia. And he's the co-founder of Trip 101, which has a lot to do with our holiday rental industry. And we'll be talking about that and about the data they've seen, the trends. That's very interesting. But Kay also brings to our discussion today his other, the other part of his career, basically. He's also the CEO and co-founder of Line Travel. No. JP. Line, <laughs> Line Travel JP. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Among other, a lot of things. So I think, first off, thank you so much for being here. And how are you? I'm good. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a past 9, 9 p.m. And then so after I have a couple of scotch whiskey, so I'm ready to go now. That's and I'm happy fact. to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for making it. As you know, the conference is for people who are into holiday rentals or vacation rentals, depending where you are in the world. Um, and what's been interesting, of course, I'd like first to go over your, your background, what you've done, because obviously we'll be talking about vacation rentals, but you, you have touched so much more in the travel industry. Can you give us a quick, quick background story sure. about yourself? Yeah. Well, I mean, I have, a, I have a long history to talk about, but, uh, you know, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. So the one thing you guys can know is actually is I'm, a, I'm not a young guy. So it's... I've been uh, I've been in industry for the last uh, almost twenty years. So I started my uh, uh, my travel business back in two thousand one in Japan, and the uh, about the five years ago. So we started the uh, uh, two point one, and the uh, um, but uh, over the course of the last uh, two decades, so I've been in in a um, online um, uh, travel industry in depth so uh, um so i can talk a lot of a lot of things about the uh, uh uh history of online travel particularly in 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 asia apac but also i i am actually excited to talk about the uh, uh this space vacation rentals uh um but all over the world because you know our trip one one is actually basically has a footprint in the uh, in the uh, 200 different countries um, 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 for uh, driving the bookings of uh, uh, the uh, uh, private private accommodation vacation rentals. Yeah, so let, let, let's start with that with Trip One One. So obviously, it's a company based in in uh, I would say Singapore, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but as you said, the footprint is global, right? Uh, you and you're so one of the biggest partner, I guess, of websites like Airbnb or HomeAway or all these websites. So maybe, and can you explain maybe what you what you guys are doing? This mix of content, travel educations, and and booking. Sure. So uh, um, we we believe in content because you know the. Uh, um, it, it's it, it's a, it's a pretty ironic because you know when we actually started our uh, business way back in 2001, you know, and then we are still doing, which is actually the meta search. It's like a Trivago, a Kaya. Um, this, place, this business is actually great, but at the same time, I think there are so many, you know, uh, demands by the users or questions or demands by the users, which are not able to be answered effectively uh, by those search engines. Because you know the uh, um, you know the world is all about long tail now, and then there's so many different questions, so many different you know uh, interests around travel. Travel is so diverse, right? So when we actually started running a meta search businesses, I mean we 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 actually ask ourselves, right? Hey, there are so many other things uh, we are not able to answer. Why not actually getting into the uh, content space? Then the next things we did was actually we started networking um, the experts of a travel, like a travel bloggers, content creators, uh, writers, whatever you want to call it. You know, those people in the world actually who knows about travel, who want to talk about travel, who want to write about travel. Mm. And so, so today I think so we, we've been able to network about the 700 of those people around the world. Nice. And together with them, we basically publish uh, hundreds of hundreds of articles every month 
uh, to address the different needs by the users, such as like, oh, the, he's the uh, uh, the most romantic, uh, you know, uh, houseboards in Amsterdam for the couple, uh, for the for the for the, uh, for the for the for the couple, you know, for the honeymoon, whatever it is. So the uh, so this is how we actually approach to aggregate our demands and also to answer the specific questions by the uh, by the travelers and, and a lot of this content also of course helps uh, travelers discover villas or uh, vacation rentals in terms of format right so the, the, the mm -hmm. content is not just about hotels but way more than that so what's the link there that you were able to, to to create between a content about a holiday rentals and let's say airbnb and, and verbal how, how, how does that work the, the user oh well so we are we're very excited about this space first of all because you know um there's so many benefits that it is still unknown for many uh travelers right and then one example is actually the uh so um i myself actually make a last minute decision to go to uh miami for some conference or so Right, which is not happening now, but uh, you know, which, which used to happen, right? And then the, uh, but I, since it's the last minute, I was not able to actually book the hotels. Mm. The official hotels are already sold out. Yeah. But I want to actually stay somewhere near the uh, convention center, right? Then, you know, if, I, if I'm able to find the article by us, like, oh, he's the uh, uh, top, five uh you know the vacation rentals or airbnb um what was within a walking distance of the miami convention center this is a spot on right so you know this is the one example so we actually kind of um um the future all the different selection of the uh, the vacation rentals by the different specific needs you know the by the uh the, by the users maybe someone actually wanted to find the uh uh the great villa in a specific location but they wanted to actually they want to have like a uh the nice uh, swimming pool with a bus for service you know so everyone actually has a different right requirements preferences so we definitely like to actually address that needs by generating a lot of different articles with a uh, you know uh um, um based on the uh, based on those specific needs so so it, it, it so it's a great treasure trove of data i guess in, underneath this because with so much traffic coming from i guess australia the us canada mm -hmm. all these english-speaking countries in the world or even people where there's even english is a very strong uh, second uh, language you probably see a lot of patterns already right and I'm curious to see, to, I know probably you have, you have some data on the, uh, how, let's say, the COVID-19 crisis affected the traffic on your website or, or what were people were booking, actually. Would you mind telling us more about this? Sure. Um, you know, um, first of all, this, uh, this, uh, this whole pandemic actually has really are, are, um, gone up and down was like uh, in, in, during the course of the last uh, you know uh, uh two three months or so so every week changing something that you know every week you know we see we saw some some different things happening and then but uh the the biggest surprise we saw was i think it's from around the uh uh re march we started seeing um the uh, the number of the uh, nights per booking of the vacation rentals actually has gone up very sharply, uh, which is actually it's uh, it's amazing because you know um, 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 we haven't really expected. First of all, we haven't really expected that you know the we saw that the every segment or every vertical in in travel just a you know, just going to plummet, right? Mm. But uh, you know, as soon as you know, the uh, uh, a lot of company actually, a lot of countries, uh, sorry, a lot of countries actually about to get into lockdown or semi-lockdown, whatever it is, 
And then a lot of users actually move very quickly. So I can probably show you some of the data set. Um, Yo, yo, can you see? Yeah, perfect. So um, in the middle, you can see you can see March 9, 2020, right? So uh, uh, from, from that point on, um, this average number of nights per booking uh, shot up. And then, which is about to, which, which, which which actually get to the uh, almost like a uh, seven nights. Hmm. So, so this is the first big thing that happened, which is a, which is a, which was very unexpected, first of all, right? And then we uh, we we reasonably assume that the uh, 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 that demand is actually primary for self quarantine. Uh, people wanted to actually stay away from big cities. They want to probably stay in a in a in a in a local uh, uh, rural side of town of the uh, of the countries, you know. They want to stay there with a the family or whatever. And then, uh, but at the same time, I think the number of booking has gone down. Right, you can see. Yeah. And then it, it actually hit the bottom around the uh, uh, early April. And then after that, I think it's it's amazing to see that I could I would say recovery. This is a recovery. We already started seeing a recovery. I think people never talk about recovery in travel or anywhere in the world, right? Yeah. But I can see this is a this is a clear recovery because you know uh, as of uh, this is actually a very updated data, by the way. So we are very lucky uh, to be able to talk about the uh, uh, the uh, uh, latest 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 trend. So um, as of last week, which is the uh, uh, May 20th or something, we've seen the number of, not only the number of the uh, uh, total, total, sorry, not only the total number of nights book, but also number of booking itself is actually, it hit the all time high. Because, you know, um, around the January 27th, which is actually, that was actually our all time high in our history. Mm. Because you know we are we are we are a little bit new to the industry, so we we kept growing nonstop over the time. So I, I still remember in the back in the January we actually celebrated. Oh wow, well, yeah, we, we went to the uh, we went to the record high numbers. But uh, last week actually we just sort of you know it, it broke that record. Yeah, so it's a combination of of. Uh, average number of nights per booking still being high and this uh, number of total bookings coming back that you're seeing, right? So it's also interesting, uh, as you said, right? The, like the, you are showing us the recovery, or at least Trip 101 is able to capture that, which is very a testament, I guess, also to the ability of Trip 101 of being here when people are looking for option. Exactly. So, and then, so what really amazed me was the, uh, not just uh, you know uh, the long stay for quarantine purposes, but also the uh, regular stays, you know, uh, uh, like a, a weekend stay, whatever it is, at the Airbnb or you know the via via home away, whatever, has already started happening all over the world, especially in North America, uh, and a little bit in Europe, and then the a uh, little bit in Asia. Uh, so we are we're trying to figure out uh, um, the uh, actual numbers by the regions, but the, the one thing we know clearly is actually it's this whole trend is actually led by the North America. Mm. And, and I would I would I would guess here, Kay, I really uh, speaking on you know, depending on on your, your experience, but of course I guess three point one one data here has a lot to do with um, suppliers or actors like. Airbnb or, or verbal, right, for book nights. But yep. what we hear as well a lot is that a lot of people in their own markets will be domestic, will be traveling domestically and may be using uh, local players. Uh, and I'm thinking mm -hmm. about oh, Southeast Asia, I'm thinking mm -hmm. Traveloka or even Agoda, right? Yep. Um, so okay, with your background, you know these players pretty well. You may all yep. 
you, you, uh, you may own a few of them even, or be part of some. Um, mm -hmm. So what's your, what's your take on that? Do you really believe that uh, when it comes to domestic travel, people may switch to some domestic players, believing that maybe there's going to be more supply? I don't know in Japan, there's going to be more supply on a Japanese player rather than on, on Airbnb, on Verbo, for example. And are there people, maybe players that are more geared towards, let's say, holiday rentals and others? What, what's your view here? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So they, because, you know, we are still trying to figure out on that aspect. But uh, the one thing I know is actually the, uh, uh, the, more regional pre the more regional players actually is getting into this space, right? Agoda is one, one example. Agoda is actually part of the, uh, the booking holdings. And then, you know, you are affiliated with a booking.com and then booking.com is, is known to, to push the uh, private accommodation area uh, over the, uh, you know, last uh, uh, few years, right? And then the sister brand Agoda has clearly saw the opportunity, has seen the opportunity and then they've been trying to uh, embrace this segment as much as possible. So, uh, uh, so we've been working with Agoda uh, too, but uh, uh, not in a in a massive scale, like the way we actually work with the uh, uh, Booking or uh, Airbnb or you know the uh, HomeAway VO or so. But uh, you know we 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 are salary actually uh, um, um, very excited with the upside that that Agoda is actually bringing in mm. in the in the regions, especially in Asia, right? And, um, but uh, uh, the, some of the even more local players like a travel local you mentioned. So uh, typically they've been focusing on, um, on domestic market. And then, but when you, when you think about the Indonesian people, so they are still uh, by far are into the, uh, you know, uh, um, the style of travel, um, like, you know, they actually stay in a regular hotels. So uh, I think it's the demand for the uh, vacation rentals for those like a regular Indonesian consumers uh, is not really uh, cultivated well. But I'm, I'm pretty sure over the time, I think in the next, uh, you know, five or 10 years, I think it's the travel Oka will definitely you know, take up this uh, this segment more seriously, mm. and then so as other like a local prayers, for example, uh, in South Korea, you know, there are a bunch of local OTAs in Japan. Also, there are there are a bunch of local local OTAs. You know, everywhere, right? Everywhere in Asia, Asia is so fragmented, and a, and it was a lot of local prayers, and a, a, those local prayers would definitely identify the opportunity in this segment. And then they are they are taken out. But uh, uh, right now, right now, the market size is actually pretty limited hmm. uh, for domestic travel. But uh, one thing I feel uh, quite positive is actually because of this pandemic, which actually uh, um, kind of uh, wake up call for the a lot of uh, domestic travelers. Um, they are now they are more used to work from home, for example, right? Now they can actually take a longer vacations. Now they feel more comfortable actually going to stay at the, the vacation rental with a family. You know, not at the hotels, actually they go to the, uh, uh, the buffet for breakfast, hmm. right? Yeah. So I think it's the, uh, you know, it is the, 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 you know, the changing behaviors by the uh, local, you know, uh, travel is definitely going to happen, and then the uh, private accommodations, uh, vacation rental is definitely going to fit well. So I think it's the this is kind of wake up call for Asia and then domestic travel in the region. I think very interesting. And and I'm, I'm I, for the last part of our conversation. I have questions about you know, around super apps. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. uh, Line with which you are associated is one of those apps you know, mm -hmm. along with WeChat, for example, of course, uh, in China. Um, so when it comes to, let's say, uh, travel, travel has been very big uh, in the kind of uh, application or, or mini app services that they provide. Um, mm -hmm. 
how do you think that's going to play again? Is it, is it uh, even for, do these, these players probably also offer all kind of accommodation types now, even if, I understand you, but even if maybe the um, uh, short-term rental side can still expand, but how big do you think is, is going to be the role of, of, of super apps here in this, in this recovery? Uh, is there like advantages for super apps in the recovery or because the super apps? Absolutely. Mobile, I'm, 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 a, I'm a super positive with the, with, with the future of uh, super apps in the travel space, um, especially, you know, the distribution side. So the, uh, um, so the, 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 there are some data is already available in a world, you know, during the uh, lockdown you know, how much of time they, the people actually spend online, first of all, and then how much of time they spend on a mobile phone, you know, the smartphones. Mm. Clearly, the line is actually the winner or the WeChat or the, or the Grab or the Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, whatever you want to call, right? Those apps actually who has a lot of frequency they provide to the users, they're the winners. Mm. So the people actually spend more time on, on those, uh, you know, addictive mobile app. And then, and then, and then the particular in Asia, I think it, those are, uh, you know, the, those are monster app is, is even more ambitious than Facebook or, you know, whatever the Instagram or whatever the app you, you actually see super popular in, in the Western countries. Right. So that's the reason why the WeChat, uh, is actually into every single vertical, including travel. And then the, uh, about a year ago, when I actually uh, talked with my Chinese friend uh, in, in, a, in a travel space, he, what he actually told me was, uh, you know, uh, was uh, um, the mind blowing. He was saying to me, uh, every day on a WeChat platform, 120,000 loom night is being booked. And the uh, and a hundred thousand uh, flight bookings is happening every day, which is growing like nonstop. And um, so that's what's happening in NA China. And then China is supposed to be you know uh, uh, the uh, uh, the hitting hitting uh, hitting the car right, hitting the whole carbs. And then the line, of course, you know the, the clearly so the example of the of the WeChat in China. So that's the reason why they actually came to us. Hey, so we want to start the travel business, but uh, you know we want to partner with, with a specialist like you guys. And then basically that was happened two years ago, and then the uh, in the last two years, you know we've started seeing we've been basically seeing like a massive spike in transaction every month. Uh, you know. We just send the uh, like push notification to the users. Now we have our uh, uh, 22 million followers, or uh, what we call line friends, yeah. in our account. Wow! And then we basically send a push notification to those people every day, and then you know, and within a half, within within a half an hour after we actually send a push notification, 90% of the transaction happened. It's 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 a very different animal comparing to the web. The web is actually all about like a pool marketing, right? You know, you you actually you basically uh, um, do the all the search engine marketing, whatever it is, and then you know you try to actually you know the capture all the demands from the, all the different sources. But uh, the line app is actually just the one single marketing practice, which is actually send a push notification. So. It's a very exciting, and then also the uh, on, on, um, it, it actually fits so well with accommodation in general. And the uh, we already started working with Airbnb very closely uh, for line platform too. Oh yeah. And the uh, 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 one of the uh, one of the big uh, advantages uh, that we have on a line app, on the, also on a web is actually so line is also well known for the uh, loyalty programs. So they, they run the program called Line, line Points. Mm. So um, in the application in travel, what we do in the example of the Airbnb is so we actually send a push notification to those 22 million people saying, okay, if you want to book the Airbnb 
um, you can actually earn, you know, 5% of the line points of the transaction amount that you actually make. But this is a limited, limited time only, uh, you know, effective until tomorrow. And then boom, you know, like a lot of people is actually just a, you know, book because, you know, they, they, they cannot actually get this benefit if they actually go to the Airbnb website directly. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, so that's it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the one of the examples of, but the many things are happening in, in Asia, right. Uh, around the, uh, those, uh, those are super apps. So uh, 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 you definitely wanted to actually keep monitoring, you know, if you wanted to actually see the, uh, what's happening in the world, uh, especially after the pandemic, because, you know, the again, so the, uh, you know, the, a lot of people are actually using a lot of those apps in the pandemic, so. So that's, that's okay, that's super in, insightful. Thanks to you being able to talk about, of course, trip one on one for holiday rentals. We've covered also some uh, domestic original players, you know, whether they are well positioned or not, right? With the right supply to capture maybe a growing demand for holiday rental. <clears throat> and so we talked as well about how actually some players like Airbnb are already present, of course, and active in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in super apps, where, but where it's also a world where actually the super app is not just a, a, a medium, right? Super app with, for example, loyalty program of lines, actually very active itself in promoted uh, promoting travel or vacation rentals here. So that's uh, super insightful. And uh, if people want to maybe know more about you or reach out to you, what, what's the best way to connect? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm very open to, the, uh, to be connected to the, any uh, social media, you know, LinkedIn, on, on, on Facebook, uh, whatever it is. So I can probably put up uh, some... Uh, some uh, some of the files here. So, uh, hang on one second. You're gonna um, say that you have to be online, right, to connect with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. Here we go. Nice. There you go. So, uh, yep. Already. Perfect. LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Line. Oh, there you go. All right. we need a QR code, but okay. Perfect. That's someone who's All organized. Right. Yep. Once again, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate that. My pleasure. And an evening. And, um, well, I hope we'll connect with you and I hope to, to meet you in person <laughs> at one of your conferences then. And, and, oh, I'd love to do that. So uh, when you when you have a chance to come to uh, Asia, so, uh, you know, uh, let me know. And then also our our event is actually is going to be happen in, in November. So hopefully, you know, everything's going to be fine. You can probably come visit us uh, in Tokyo and then uh, we'll, we'll catch up then. Sounds good. Keishibata, thanks a lot, and you take care. Thank you.